let's talk about caches in computers. Caches are an essential component of modern computer architecture, acting as a high-speed memory buffer between the CPU and the slower main memory, or RAM. Their primary purpose is to reduce the time it takes for the CPU to access frequently used data and instructions, minimizing the memory bottleneck that can limit overall system performance. There are four main cache levels, L1, L2, L3, and L4. Most modern processors feature a multi-level cache hierarchy, with each level varying in size, speed, and proximity to the CPU. The higher the cache level, L1, L2, L3, the larger and slower the cache becomes, but it can store more data. The L1 cache is closest to the CPU cores and is typically split into instruction, or I cache, and data, or D cache, segments to optimize both fetching instructions and accessing data. In terms of speed, the access speed is around 1 to 4 CPU clock cycles, which is extremely fast. The L2 cache is larger than L1 and often unified, holding both instructions and data together. It's slower than L1, but still provides quick access to frequently accessed data. It is typically accessed in 10 to 20 CPU cycles. The L3 cache is shared among all CPU cores in multi-core processors. This cache serves as a higher level buffer to hold data that might not be immediately needed, but can still be fetched quickly if required. The cache is usually accessed in 20 to 50 CPU cycles. The L4 cache is rarely used in consumer-grade CPUs, but present in some high-performance systems like Intel's Edrum caches or in specialized processors. It's slower than L3, but faster than main memory. Let's talk about cache design principles. The design of caches revolves around exploiting two key types of locality. In temporal locality, if a piece of data is accessed once, it's likely to be accessed again soon. Caches keep frequently used data close to the CPU to leverage this property. In spatial locality, if data in one memory location is accessed, nearby data located within the same memory block or region is also likely to be accessed soon. Caches tend to load blocks of data into cache lines to optimize for this. So how does the cache work? When the CPU needs data, it first checks if the data is in one of the cache levels. For a cache hit, the required data is found in the cache, and it is quickly returned to the CPU. This happens in a few clock cycles. In a cache miss, the data is not in the cache, and it must be fetched from main memory, which is much slower. This can lead to hundreds of clock cycles of delay or latency. To minimize cache misses, modern CPUs employ various pre-fetching techniques to predict the data that will be needed soon and loads it into the cache before the CPU requests it. Let's talk about cache organization. In a direct mapped cache, each block of memory maps to exactly one cache line. The design is simple and fast, but suffers from conflicts. When two different memory blocks map to the same cache line, one of them gets evicted, even if both are frequently used. In a set associative cache, memory blocks can map to several different lines within a set, reducing conflicts. In a fully associative cache, data can be placed anywhere in the cache, giving the greatest flexibility but the highest lookup complexity. Fully associative caches are usually only found in small caches like translation lookaside buffers or TLBs. A translation lookaside buffer is a specialized cache used in modern CPUs to quickly translate virtual memory addresses to physical memory addresses bypassing the slower process of page table lookups. TLBs benefit from fully associative caching because virtual to physical address mappings are highly unpredictable, so the flexibility of allowing any entry to map to any cache lines maximizes the hit rate. Given that TLBs typically store only a few dozen to a few hundred entries, the complexity of fully associative search is manageable, ensuring fast address translations critical for memory access performance. Now let's touch on replacement policies. When the cache is full and new data needs to be loaded, the CPU must decide which data to evict. There's a few common strategies. In least recently used, or LRU, the least recently accessed data is removed. This method is effective but requires extra hardware to track access patterns. In first in first out, or FIFO, the oldest cache entry is replaced, regardless of how often it has been accessed. In random replacement, there is random eviction of a cache block. It's simple to implement, but less effective in many scenarios. In conclusion, caches are a critical feature in modern processors, bridging the speed gap between the CPU and main memory by efficiently storing frequently accessed data and instructions. By employing multiple cache levels and optimizing for temporal and spatial locality, caches significantly enhance system performance. 
The complexity of cache organization from direct mapped to fully associative designs along with efficient replacement policies ensures that the CPU experiences minimal delays due to memory access.